It's a bit of a rip on a Batman story. Hey guys, this is my review for the latest animated Batman movie, Gotham by Gaslight. This is the latest entry in the DC Animated Universe uh, series. As we all know, it's been kind of a game of Russian roulette with this series in the last little while. It's either been disappointing, somewhat alright, okay, and decent. We haven't really had any really, really good ones uh, since, in my opinion, Gods and Monsters. Sure, Teen Titans vs. Justice League was pretty decent, but we haven't really had a standout one. And Gotham by Gaslight tries to be standout, but it does have some issues. First off, I'd want to say this is probably the best looking one in a while, especially since it's got an unnecessary R rating. I do not understand why DC Animated seems to be obsessed with making these movies R. We We've clearly seen that movies can push the freaking limit with swear words for being PG-13. All the Fast Furious movies prove it all the time. So why was this one rated R? It says some violence. There's nothing that's violent in this. There's no superior gore. There was that Teen Titans The Judas Contract. That had a guy called Brother Blood who literally bathed in buckets of blood from recently murdered victims and it was rated PG-13, so I do not understand why this is rated R. Otherwise though, because of that budget, these movies obviously don't get enough work into them to look as superior as the PG-13 ones do, but because there's so much done in the dark, there's a lot of dark and brown, grays, and blacks, this one is the best looking R-rated one, for sure. It's better than Justice League Dark by miles, and it's better than The Killing Joke. So definitely this is one of the best looking ones in a while. It's really cool to see Bruce Greenwood back in the role as Batman. He did a fantastic job voicing him with Under the Red Hood, so I was really happy to see him come back. As for sticking to the comic, this one does and doesn't. It is mixing the two stories that were done in the original graphic novel, but it's also taking a fresh spin on them and adding them together to basically not seem forced until the ending. In this story, Jack the Ripper is going around Gotham killing women in the similar fashion to how he did in England in the actual event. So what's going on is Batman, or Bruce Wayne, is trying to figure out who he is all the while, kind of developing this relationship with Selina Kyle, who's in this story, which is actually kind of cool because she wasn't in the graphic novel, if I'm correct. And they actually add a bunch of characters that weren't in the graphic novel, kind of sort of gestures to the original works. Like for instance, Pamela Isley's in it as a stripper. She's not in it for very long, but she's there. So I thought that these hallmarks, these callbacks to original characters wasn't forced, which again, I thought was actually pretty decent considering how this could have been forced. And again, while the stories are melding two together, the pacing is actually pretty good. You feel entertained the whole way. And despite the fact that it's only 76 minutes, they're able to handle a lot of story in it. They're able to really construct this pathway that works up until the end. The whole time you're actually bit on your toes at trying to figure out who the villain is. And most of these animated movies, they make you think it's this guy, but it's really this guy. And that's basically what you've been told. That's the same thing you've got throughout all the animated series. And this movie doesn't do it either. But that's only because it takes such a ass backwards choice as to who the villain is. You're literally going to be sitting there going, what the fuck did I just watch? Because the villain makes no sense. When the, f the killer is finally revealed, the entire climax, the entire excitement of the film just goes down the shitter because of how poorly constructed the conclusion is. There's about three different twists that appear and there's several plot uh, directions that are solved in the matter of seconds because of how poorly constructed the ending is. And it's a shame because the movie does a great job up until this point, but then everything with the end execution falls apart. And it's really unfortunate because the voice acting is pretty good, the animation is pretty good, the action scenes are, like I said, some of the most well animated in terms of the R-rated DC animated universe films. It's the best one for sure in terms of look. And you will like the movie up until about the 60 minute mark and then it's going to slowly start to crumble around you and you're just going to be shaking your head going, 
why? So in the end, I'm going to give Batman Gotham by Gaslight a 4 out of 7. It's an alright time, it's very enjoyable and very well paced and pretty well animated up until the end, and then it just falls to shit. And there's literally no way to counter it because that villain just... It doesn't follow the comic at all of how it ends. Anyways guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you like what you see, maybe leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.